Hi there. I was planning for my next video to be another yin yoga video um, looking at releasing the shoulders. Um, and unfortunately, I managed to put my back into quite bad spasm yesterday. I thought, oh dear, I'm not going to have a video, you know, to, to do or to post on Monday. And then I thought, why don't I share with you the things that I do when my back goes into spasm? Because it does happen every now and then, um, my lower back. Why don't I share with you the few things that I find help me? And possibly there might be something that could help you too. I have had years of issues with my back, um, both upper back around the neck and lower back as well. And um, so I've had a lot of treatments from chiropractors, physiotherapists, biokineticists, and you name it throughout the years. And between that and my yoga practice and learning more about how the, the body works through my studies, I've just found a few little things that tend to help me. Now that I understand more why my body reacts the way it does, I can sometimes catch it before it goes into full spasm. Um, but sometimes it's just, I just can't which is what happened yesterday. So I'm far more mobile today because I'm on day two than I was yesterday. I was in severe pain yesterday. What happens with me is in part because I do have this sort of hypermobility. If I do something that causes um, movement, which is unsafe, especially through the lower back, my, my, the muscles overreact basically and they go into the spasm to almost form kind of a, a splint around that joint. Um, and in my case, it's sort of the left hip and into the lower side um, of the back on the left side to kind of stabilize it and avoid that unsafe movement from occurring. So it's almost an overreaction, but it's there to keep the body safe. It doesn't want any injury through the joint. So if I don't move with thought, if I am picking up something that is heavy when I'm doing my weight training, if I don't go into my movement with thought and making sure that I'm stabilizing the various joints that are involved in the movement, I will very often um, get a spasm in this lower back. Squats, deadlifts, um, single leg def deadlifts in particular, or the other day I was picking up one of the, the waters to refill our water filter and I didn't think about it. And what happens is when you have any kind of flexion in the spine, the spine is a beautiful S shape and through the lower back just above the pelvis it comes in like that so now when you round the spine and you put pressure on it it's extremely vulnerable and this is when injury can occur on top of that i have ridden and fallen off horses for decades so that hasn't done any favors to my spine at all so as a result and as a consequence i do have this sort of hyper reactivity to certain things the other reason why your big muscles will go into spasm like that is because the smaller stabilizer muscles that stabilize the joint aren't functioning as they should. So the bigger surrounding muscles take on that job. And as soon as they go into spasm, it causes um, a lot of pain. So once my back goes into proper spasm, um, I treat it with cold with ice because there is an inflammation in that area. Um, so we want to try and reduce inflammation. So I use ice and I use um, a patch, a topical patch that I just put on the area that has an anti-inflammatory. I use the Transact patches, um, which has got fluoroprofen as um, its active ingredient. So that's just an anti-inflammatory. And then I take anti-inflammatories internally as well before I go to sleep. So cold, a patch, and um, just take some over-the-counter anti-inflammatories, pain relief. In the next 
sort of prong of attack is to get that spasm to release a little bit. So instead of the muscles being so tight, we want to move them a little bit, get a little bit of extension, contraction, so that it releases that spasm and starts to relax. So I do those lying down. I'll show you some of the movements that I do that help me. So before I do any exercises, and you can do these actually in your bed before you get up in the morning, just to create a little bit of movement and try to relieve some of that spasm before you get up. Bend the knees and practice some of your breathing into the belly. Really expanding through the belly and then releasing. With this deep belly breath and expanding the belly and releasing, you're gonna feel that expansion come through to the back as well. So we're just creating a little bit of movement through the back, but it's not so much that the muscles will get even tighter. So you can just press your hands, place your hands on your belly and feel that movement. And now from here with the legs still bent, we're going to do some tilting through the pelvis again very small movement, but you can place your fingers on those hip bones and just roll that pelvis backwards and forwards. So it's a very slight movement. You're probably only moving about so much fractionally. And you're not creating this movement by creating a tension through the core. We don't want to create muscle tension. We want to create muscle relaxation we want to try and break that spasm so you do this movement by just pressing down gently with the heels and then rocking that pelvis so your spine goes from a nice kind of neutral position where we have that curve and through the lower back to flattened against the ground as you rock that pelvis back towards you you can do this a few times. Come back to a nice resting position. So with the legs still bent, just bring the feet against each other and the knees against each other. If you're lying on the ground, you can extend your arms out to other side just for a bit of support. If you're on a bed, you can kind of hold onto the sides. And then we're just going to create a little bit of rotational movement through the lower back. So dropping the knees to the right, keep your feet together. Keep your shoulders into the ground and as you come up you might want to press down with that hand so you don't get too much sort of pulling sensation through that lower back and we're just dropping slowly left and right these aren't stretches per se these are movements encouraging gentle movement in those spasmed muscles to get them to just relax this is all we're trying to do If you can, don't know if you can hear any noise in the background. My daughter's playing her cello. If your knees on one side don't want to go as far as the other side, that's fine. It's very important when doing these exercises to listen to the body. As I've mentioned, these are purely 
um, movements to encourage movement in those muscles that are really tight and spasming. That's all we're trying to do is break that spasm so that you can then go on and be able to move and do whichever other exercises you need to do. And there you go. So this next um, exercise or movement, you need a yoga block. So bring that pelvis up off the floor slowly and using your glutes. Don't put any pressure on this back. And you're going to slide this block underneath the pelvis. So it's not underneath the lower back and it's not underneath the buttocks going into the thighs. It's underneath the pelvis itself. And then we're going to extend one leg and then the other. And then bring the left arm overhead and then the right. And you're just going to stay here for 40, 50, 60 seconds breathing. What I tend to find with my um, lower back pain is that I feel this need to stretch through the flexors in the front. It's all connected and related. But this provides a nice opportunity to stretch along the front of the body. And at the same time, you provide a little bit of traction through that lower back. If any of these cause any pain or that sharp spasming, feel, you know what that feels like, don't do them. It shouldn't result in any of that type of feeling. All we're trying to do is create a little bit of relief. Definitely not pain. When you've stayed here, don't stay here too long. I would say a minute at the absolute maximum. Bring your arms back one at a time. Slowly bring your feet up, your legs bent. Press down with the feet, engage your glutes. You take some of the pressure off the block. You don't want to come up too high. That is going to hurt you. What well, hurts me? Slide the block away. And then slowly lower back down onto the floor. And I like to bring my feet out to the sides. Just let those knees fall against each other. Again, just opening up slightly through the sacrum. Almost recovering here, just for a few moments. So the last movement I like to do is to bring my knees up off the ground and my hands over my kneecaps and just very gently roll those knees in a circle with the hands. Creating some movement here through the hips and the lower back. So it's not an exaggerated movement or a big movement. Small circles. Pair that with your breathing. Inhale as the knees move away from the body. And exhale as they move in toward the body. Change direction.
and lower those feet down to the ground. So those are a few movements that I find help me, helps to just kind of break the spasm up a little bit so that I can then move around um, and movement certainly helps my pain as well. So I hope there's at least something that you can take of value from this video if you are somebody who does suffer from pain through the lower back, back spasms. Um, yeah, I will be back with a, another video on Friday, hopefully, if this, I'm sure it will have died down by then, it normally does. Um, so yeah, enjoy the rest of your week and I hope it's pain-free and keep moving.